Back in March, I took a short vacation to Las Vegas, and you know what? I am really bad at taking a break from work, and I took way too long to getting around to putting this video together. Aside from ogling all the over-the-top architecture and appreciating the fancy materials and the construction quality in the hotels on the Strip, I went and found a prop tech company to visit. You may have heard of them from a little tweet from Elon Musk after he sold most of his houses and supposedly moved into a tiny house. Boxable. They're aiming to lower the cost of housing while maintaining high quality standards by manufacturing them in a factory. It's got some key differences from modular home building, with their most prominent being that their flagship product isn't modular. It's an entire home, albeit a tiny one. The Casita is a 375 square foot home complete with a kitchen, bathroom, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC all installed, and they can fold up, fit in a freight container, and be delivered on a truck. And the price? $49,500 excluding shipping. Sounds pretty amazing. Let's dive into the details and see if it's the next big thing in prop tech or too good to be true. They were founded in 2017 by a father and son team, Paolo Tiramani, who basically loves inventing things and has been filing patents for over 30 years, and his son, Galliano Tiramani. The company is fairly sizable with about 30 employees working on the operations and over 100 people working in the factory. And the company's a little bit unusual in the way they went about fundraising. They did have a small number of investors kickstart things in the beginning, but most of their money has been raised through crowdfunding. And they have some very prominent calls to action on the website to get you to invest. If you're a regular individual, you can invest for 80 cents a share through their regulation crowdfunding option, and you have to put in at least $1,000 for that option. But if you're an accredited investor and you put in 10,000 or more, then you can get in at 70 cents per share. According to Start Engine, this puts Boxable's valuation at $3.3 billion. Pretty crazy, and you have to remember that they're giving themselves this valuation. But part of how they're justifying the valuation is that they've got this ridiculously long waitlist, supposedly over 80,000 people, and a small portion of them have paid non-refundable deposits. But if you start digging into what's going on with the waitlist and then read some of the fine print, you'll realize that some of this is smoke and mirrors, some of it's over-promising, and a lot of it is just really, really good marketing. If you want to reserve a casita on the website, you're presented with three options. You can either get on the waitlist for free, but you have to go to the back of the line, which pretty much means you're just signing up for an email list. Or you can officially get on the waitlist for $200. And lastly, you can get early access to a casita if you pay a $5,000 deposit. And the site says if you want one, join 1,000 plus people on the waitlist. So I'm guessing those 1,000 plus people are the ones that put the deposits down whereas their press releases citing 80,000 plus people likely includes the ones who didn't pay. But go back to the summer of 2021, and there was a lot more controversy surrounding Elon Musk's first tweet. He seemed to be implying that he lived in a boxable. He said it was a foldable tiny home for $50,000 at SpaceX's campus in Boca Chica, Texas. And back in November of 2020, Boxable announced that they had a top secret customer in Boca Chica. It all seemed to match. The casita I'm sitting in right now, we just installed in Boca Chica, Texas for a top secret customer. Yet in a video interview, Galliano Tiramani refused to confirm or deny whether Elon actually owned one. And later in 2021, Elon tweeted that even though he had a tiny home, it wasn't a boxable. Cool product though. And this didn't stop Boxable from taking Elon's tweet out of context and plastering cool product though on the website. But I don't have a screenshot of that because it was since taken down. Because all of this was resolved a few weeks ago when Elon officially confirmed on the Full Send podcast that he does in fact own a Boxable at SpaceX. But the Boxable rumor. That, I do actually have a Boxable, yeah. You do? Some prototype Boxable that's down in South Texas. Yep. He is invested in the company and he plans to bring one to Mars? I'm assuming the product is going to have to evolve a little bit more before he does that. And of course, Boxable's marketing was all over it, and they published a video of the delivery and the setup. So it was a bit of a strange controversy, and it makes you wonder if they were just dancing around the rumor to really just milk the marketing buzz it generated. Because milk it they did, and I think their marketing is some of the strongest I've seen of any prop tech company. Ever. But perhaps it's a bit too strong, because one of my biggest concerns is that they've created this monster. They've got the huge wait list and all these expectations, and in order to live up to the hype, they've got to execute. But I think they're pretty strong on the execution side as well, because I went through their factory and for the most part, I liked what I saw. They were nice enough to give me a private tour when I called them up and I said I was going to randomly show up in a few hours. 
I am here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Boxable Factory, which is 170,000 square feet and pumping out two to three homes per day. And giving me the tour today is... I'm Hannah. All right, <laughs> and we're gonna drive through the factory. All right, so welcome to factory one. We moved into this facility in July. We started production in September. So we're very, very new. Sorry, it's just the start of the new shift. It's a little bit quieter. Um, so right now we produce about two to three casitas a day, but our goal is to do 12. And we're gonna hit that when we add more automation and more employees. We wanna be able to run overnight or 24 hours. Um, so we just need to add enough employees for a third shift. That's a lot of people. Nice. <laughs> So right now we are producing for a government order. They ordered 156 of our 20 by 20 casitas, which you'll see after this. Um, those 20 by 20 casitas are made up of 13 structurally insulated panels, and each uh, each panel has three materials. The outermost layer is a green stuff right there. There's some on those racks, and then some right here as well. It's just galvanized steel. That's going to face all the elements. The inside layer is going to be that white stuff stacked all around. That's polystyrene. It's about six inches thick. And if you can see, I'm kind of blind, but <laughs> there's already pre-cut holes and chases in that polystyrene. So yep. when we get down to the power station, we can slip all those wires through. Got it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Super efficient. I know, right? Hello. And then the third innermost layer that you'll see is this right here. It's called MGO or magnesium oxide. Oops. Yep. Similar to a drywall <laughs> or sheetrock, but a little bit better. It is flame, water, wind, mold, and insect resistant. Oh. So it's pretty is good it stuff. the same thickness or thicker on the actual house? Um, actually a sample right behind you of a sliver from one of our panels. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that Let's stuff right there, oh, perfect, thank you. That stuff right there, um, because there's no studs in the walls, it can still hold about 90 pounds per square inch and you can still mount TVs, hang shelves, whatever you want to do with it. Around all those materials is a frame that's made up of PVC and laminated wood. So over here they're cutting and gluing all that together. And then on the first portion of our conveyor belt is where they connect all four corners to make that frame. Nice. So once they're all connected, we shift it down the conveyor belt a little bit and we bring it to these crazy robot arms. These are actually our vacuum lift system. So these lift each material and we'll place it inside that frame. But because they're not fully automated yet, we do guide them into that frame. But eventually it'll do it all by itself. Wow. Yeah, right? <laughs> So we'll do one layer of material and then that gray machine will come across and apply a layer of glue. We'll do more material, more glue, just like a cake but way less tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's all stacked together, we take it into this machine right here for lamination. This kind of works like a vacuum seal bag, but a little bit more intense. It applies 72 tons of pressure. So that makes sure that all that glue is spread even and there's no air bubbles. Mm. Once it's all squeezed together, we put it on that tilt table and if it's a floor or a roof panel, there's actually a steel beam that's connected in between it with a special hinge on the end. And that'll allow us to fold it and uh, still be flexible, but very sturdy. If you look right over here, sorry, wrong side of the road, but <laughs> that's the end of that hinge. And it's a little funky, but that's one of our 52 patents. And that does quite enough for us. So we're able to still fold it, wow. stack all those, those panels. When we ship it, it's all together. Um, we can just unfold it and install it for you. So how many times do you expect users to fold and unfold their house after it's delivered? Um, so we're still finalizing all those numbers. I know they're up to 30 now. So uh -huh. if you plan on moving a lot, it definitely will meet those <laughs> needs. Um, eventually we want to make an RV version. Uh -huh. So um, we got to have pretty high numbers for that. Yeah. <laughs> Once we get them all connected, we stand them up and put them on these easels. Um, they help us wheel them around the factory. They get pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. This room right here is for mudding and sanding. Make sure all those panels are smooth and pretty before we take it into that room for some paint. This is our first factory, so we don't have any custom options just yet. Um, right now it's pretty cookie cutter, um, but just with the paint, or same with the paint and everything else, all very neutral colors, you can paint right over them. MGO is just like a drywall, so any house paint will work. Mm -hmm. um, same with the exterior, we're working on making it so you can paint the outside with any regular house paint. Mm. Right here is our power station. Sorry, we have a few extra panels over here today. Uh, but they do all your wiring, all your outlets and stuff like that. Um, if you look, there's some cables kind of peeking out already on some of them. Um, they also install your HVAC. That's what's in these boxes. It's a mini split system. But I'll show you when we get past these panels how it looks when it's installed. Very cool. Yeah, so right above that window cutout, you can see that mini split system. Yep. It does all your heating and cooling. Super energy efficient. That, with the LED lights that we install, keep the bills very, very low. We're mm -hmm. talking $28 a month. 
So basically a service fee at that point. Yeah. <laughs> this is all of our final assembly though. Um, each station, they kind of install a different portion, whether it's the cabinets, the doors, the windows, anything to make kind of a functional space. Got it. Where do you guys get the cabinets from? Um, I, you know, I'm not too sure where we get it sourced from. We are sourcing a lot of our materials, but we're mm -hmm. looking for a larger facility. We need one at least 20 times this size. So we can start making our own materials, make larger configurations, mm -hmm. um, basically more custom options as well for everyone. Got it. Yeah, this one we're just kind of perfecting it here. Um, but once we get that other facility, we can make our own materials and save a lot of extra costs. And the other facility is going to be here in Vegas? Uh, the goal is to keep it in Nevada. Got it. Yeah, we need a, whatever 20 times this is, about four acres, so 80 acres, oh. <laughs> quite a bit well, of land. Oh, there's a lot of land down here. Yeah. <laughs> So right over here is all of our final assembly though. We're getting closer to the end. Um, and I wanted to show you one with all three roof panels, but it's kind of hard to see right up there. So this one only has two of the three roof panels, but if you notice there's gaskets on some of them, mm -hmm. they look just like this. Um, they're actually a little bit bigger, but I was too weak for them. So when they're um, folded up like that, they sit on top of each other like this, but when they do fold out and meet together, it seals tight like a car oh, door. Okay. So no water's getting in there. And then we do put a roof liner on top of it. You can see it a little bit further down. We wouldn't seal it down completely though until we installed the casita. Just so there's no ridges or crinkles in it. Same with the flooring. The flooring is a sheet vinyl. Um, so once uh, we ship it to you, it is installed, but we'll seal it down completely once we fold, or fold out everything. Yeah. Are there options for different floors if you want? Or uh, you not just that? yet. There's still a very cookie cutter here. Um, mm. That larger facility though, again, will have a lot more options. But it is a sheet vinyl, so it's pretty easy to replace if it's not something you like, if this first one doesn't meet your needs. Mm -hmm. So I don't have one folded up inside right now. There's a few wrapped up outside, but again, it's mm -hmm. the end of the day for everyone. Um, but basically the magic here is we take these 20 by 20 casitas just like that, and we fold it up to 20 feet long, eight and a half feet wide, and a little less than 12 feet tall. And that's in that wow. sweet spot for shipping because anything over eight and a half feet wide, you have to pay for oversized shipping, mm. which has a lot of extra permits and has made prefabricated housing really unaffordable before. Uh, it still kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> I've been having trouble. I've wanted to build modular houses, but uh, yeah. shipping is always one of the biggest bottlenecks. That's the scary part. Here, luckily, because it doesn't have that oversized shipping, we're estimating between two and $10 per mile from Las Vegas. Um, that's just because our, our facility is here. But once we get facilities in other places as well, we can keep those costs lower. So if you're on the East Coast, you can ship from like Midwest instead of all the way in Las Vegas. Got it. Yeah. So where's the furthest you guys are shipping? Oh, uh, well right now we're only doing that government order, um, mm -hmm. but I know they are taking it somewhere with hurricanes, so southeast-ish from here. Okay. Pretty far. Um, but it's military base housing, so I really don't know the fun details, unfortunately. Oh. They're going to be a good guinea pig for us. Um, we do have another round of testing going on right now, the third party testing, to show what we can stand wind, uh, wind wise, seismic testing, and everything else. Um, we do have to get housing, modular housing licensing in every state first before we can start selling. So we're applying for that first in Nevada and in California. California has the strictest laws, so that testing will get all those numbers that yep. they need. Um, and every other state should be a lot easier after that. New York might be right behind California. That's yeah. where I'm from, by the way. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> well, nice. Welcome to Vegas, then. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to back us in, and then Barbara's going to go outside and show you that casita. Since the tour, they've completed the order of the 156 casitas from the government, and a second factory is confirmed, basically right next door to the first one. And as you heard Hannah say, they're looking to increase automation in the process to get it to 12 houses per day and between three to 5,000 per year. If you do a little bit of math here, this is where you see they're running into some execution problems. Not because the execution is poor per se, but because the hype and the valuation is so far ahead of it. Looking at the trailing revenues, the government order was a little bit over $9 million and they've collected non-refundable deposits from at least a thousand people. Let's be generous and call it 2,000 people at a full $5,000 deposit. So $10 million. And you know, add the two up and round it up to $20 million in sales, at which point their $3.3 .3 billion valuation is a 165x multiple on their revenues. In context, a high-flying startup growing a few hundred percent a year is valued at 10 to 20x revenues, and a blue chip stock may be around 1 to 3x revenues. But if we look forward and suppose that they hit their production target of 12 casitas a day, they'll be making just shy of that 5,000 houses a year, 
And at 50,000 per casita, their $3.3 billion valuation puts them at a 13x multiple. So basically, they've got to execute perfectly on what they're promising so that their valuation will fall to a level where it's expensive instead of unrealistic. That's a little bit worrying. But then on the flip side, the product is really not bad. And again, they seem to be executing quite well. And you can see that with their actual product. The next part of my tour was in the actual casita. Let's take a look. So now I'm outside and I'm going to get a tour of the casita. Uh, Barbara here is going to walk us through. Alright, welcome inside. Alright. So what are the dimensions here? So this is our casita. It's 375 square feet. So that's 19 and a half by 19 and a half. Wow. It's got everything. We're going to wash your dryer. So it is a washer and dryer combo. So I'll tell you what's included and what's not. And I'll start with this big window over here to the left. So that big window is just something we have when we do our shows. You're actually going to have a solid wall right there with two windows the same size as right here, just like the picture. So this wall would actually replace that big window over there. As big tape is, you actually have a front door. And the door that we just came in through would be your back door. And they will be I solid see. doors. They won't be glass. So the door, front door would be actually right here. Yeah. Got it. Front door, back door. If I stand right here, everything to the left of me, all the way down to that wall, is included. Except the decorations and the chairs. So everything you see on this left hand side is included. Got it. This is bigger than my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, that nice. top also folds down, so it gives you uh -huh. a little bit more of a walkway space yeah. right here. Still standing here, everything to my right is not included. So not the bed, um, mm -hmm. not the couch or this designer casita closet. Mm -hmm. um, all of the items can be purchased and shipped separately. Is this a fireplace? <laughs> yeah, it is nice. Fire. It's included with the closet, um, but the items just don't, they don't fit when it's folded into that eight and a half okay, foot so box. That's why we give you optional. everything on that side. Yeah. Awesome. What about the bathroom? <laughs> No Shower. moving in here. <laughs> oh, the mixed mirror, colors. Lights up, turn the fog, or heats up the fog. Oh, nice. And the, so this is what, an anti fog button? Yep, that's what allows the heat up. And oh, and this changes the light. It. Oh, it turns it on. Very cool. <laughs> and then these fixtures are standard? Yes. Got it. All right. Mini split up there heats and cools the unit. Um, all of the rest of the connections are outside, so I can show you where those are Got it. when you're done. Okay, yeah, let's go outside. Great. Um, they won't be there. That's just something a sponsor wanted. But if you mm -hmm. wanted to add it to yours and make it look more like a home, by all means, you certainly could. Over here, the holes in the trip will not be there. Behind the kitchen is where you have your water connection, so you're going to have an inlet for clean water, an outlet for gray, and then you're going to also have a three-inch sewage pipe. Got it. And then the rest of your connections are here, but like I mentioned, the on the inside, over here. Okay. you'll have a front door right here, so we're yep. going to put these on the back side where the back door is. We'll Got it. Okay. And this whole thing folds down, right? That's right. Nuts. Awesome. All right, Barbara. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. So a few things have happened since that tour in March that's getting them into some dangerous territory. First, the price is no longer $49,500, and it's not explicitly stated on their website anymore. Instead, there's just a note explaining that inflation has caused material prices to go up. That was always a risk because at $50,000 for 375 square feet, they were priced at $132 a square foot for the built structure. To put that in context, in New York City, I usually expect to pay about four to $600 per square foot for new construction. And in rural areas, I expect around two to 300 square feet. So I suspect that their margins are incredibly small and maybe not even profitable at all until they scale up some more. Second, there's a lot of additional costs that the marketing conveniently leaves out. Their fine print states that the price does not include taxes, governmental fees, or shipping costs. And the shipping comes out to between $3 and $10 per mile from Las Vegas, 
which could get really expensive until they start scaling to other locations. Although Hannah did mention they're not shipping that far from Vegas right now. But then of course you have to buy the land, but you also have to set up the site, which means you also have to pay for the permits, the landscaping, utility hookups, and the foundation. And their FAQs state that depending on your location and the complexity of your site, this cost can range anywhere from approximately $5,000 to $50,000. So if all of those extra costs lead to $100,000 or more not including the land, it's basically right in the range of where I expect to pay for a traditionally built house of the same size. So that's a little bit concerning. So if the costs are approximately the same between a traditionally built house and a casita, then the only remaining benefit is really the speed to set it up on site, but then you've got their wait list, which means building a traditional home would be much faster anyway. And that's generally the concern I've had with modular and factory built homes, so it's a problem. All right, next I'm gonna do a SWOT analysis. And if you're not familiar, it's basically an assessment of a company's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you tend to put them in a table with four quadrants. For the strengths, Obviously, I think marketing is one of their biggest strengths. And despite the controversy, they now have a huge customer base. Having a massive waiting list is a great problem to have. They also recently partnered up with D.R. Horton, America's largest home builder by volume, so that could really help them deliver on their wait list. And don't get me wrong, despite my concerns, the concept overall is great. I have seen and spoke to a bunch of modular companies that, despite all of the savings and producing modulars in a factory and assembling quickly on their site, their factory time is backlogged and there's no time savings at all. And if you go with a modular company that allows custom designs, I've actually found them to be more expensive than traditional construction, unless you're building at least five or more of the same house. So Boxable sidestepped all of that by just sticking with one design for now and relentlessly optimizing their costs on it. Next weaknesses. Their marketing is a strength, but I think it's also a weakness because they really overpromise too much. They might be setting themselves up for a PR nightmare if they can't deliver on all these promises. They've already had to take down the $49,500 price tag from the website because of inflation, so that promise was already broken with the people who first put down deposits. One of their biggest hurdles to delivering to all these customers is their incredibly difficult scaling problem, and it's the same problem I've seen with every modular company. They always have ambitions to ship all over the country. Boxable actually wants to ship all over the world. We think we figured out how to build any building type, mass produced in the factory, anywhere in the planet. If we pull this off, we're going to be able to help billions of people. But they need a lot more factories in strategic locations. These factories are not cheap to set up. Boxable is actually giving companies the option to set up factories on their behalf, probably almost like a franchise, and it says that it costs at least $5 million, which if you ask me, sounds a little bit low for something that's 175,000 square feet. I just did some quick math and it's $28 a square foot. That's 5x cheaper than a casita. There's no way they can build a factory that cheap. Maybe if Elon Musk is guiding them with production advice, they'll be able to execute, but it's a really big maybe. And the other huge hurdle is zoning issues. They have to balance their expansion to other regions with actually being able to sell to those regions per their FAQ. What codes do they comply with? Boxable buildings conform to and exceed the requirements of most any building code. Boxable will come with state modular approval. Modular approval is great because it reduces local inspections and the plans are pre-approved at the state level. We don't have that modular approval just yet, but it should be ready soon. Additionally, the Casita product is certified as a park model RV in accordance with ANSI 119.5 in all 50 states. All right, moving on to opportunities. Supposing that they can overcome a lot of these weaknesses and execute well, there are a lot of opportunities ahead for them. Obviously, once they've worked out all their factory processes, they're going to start achieving economies of scale. And I'm sure they're going to know exactly which regions they should expand to based on demand and profitability. Another opportunity is one that they've publicly outlined on their website. It's basically plans for truly modular designs that allow boxable segments to be connected to form larger homes. And one other opportunity? Don't forget Elon's going to be taking these to Mars. And finally, under threats? One of their biggest threats is something that most developers are familiar with the costs of building. Material and labor has been shooting up. Their margins are probably razor thin, and that's why they've got to raise prices. There's also plenty of competitors. Modular construction has been around for decades, but here's some notable competitors. Crate Modular is a company that turns shipping containers into habitable buildings. Star Energy has an energy-efficient home kit, and guess what the price is? 
under $50,000. And also, if you've been a fan of my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a big fan of 3D printed buildings. I think it's potentially better technology, and there's some serious competition popping up there. Icon, for example, they've got a great marketing team as well. And you know what? I may actually do a prop tech spotlight on them one day. And also, if Boxable's going to Mars, they're gonna have to compete with a 3D printer there too. AI Space Factory is a 3D printed home company that already won a contract with NASA. All right, so that's it for the SWOT analysis. And to sum it all up, I'm gonna be ending most of my prop tech spotlights with an assessment across three things. First, it's usefulness and who should use it. As a developer, I could see this being really useful if I wanted to add an ADU to a rental house. And I think Boxable does see a big opportunity with developers given their relationship with DR Horton. Although if you look at all their marketing, they seem to be a direct to consumer product. And at 375 square feet, the Casita truly is useful for a lot of people. So for usefulness, I rate it high. Next, what is the risk level of this product? This one is clearly high for me. If I paid a deposit today, I don't know when I'm actually gonna receive it, how much it's actually gonna cost, whether I can install it where I want it delivered, or if the company will even still be around by the time that happens. So again, super high risk. And the last thing is my outlook on them. It really comes down to whether their strengths will consistently overshadow their weaknesses as they expand. Given the risks and the insanely high valuation, I wouldn't invest in it. But I do think they're capable of pulling off a lot of what they're aiming to do. And I really do hope they're going to succeed because they're solving a real problem here. <sighs> Holy cow, this video is long. Now you know why I've been putting it off since March. Anyway, more PropTech spotlights coming soon, so hit that subscribe button. PropTech Scout, out.